Okay, so uh, the last class we were talking about cost of capital. So first, just discuss with your partner what does cost of capital mean. How do we calculate the cost of capital for the company? So discuss with your partner what does cost of capital mean. How can we calculate that? Okay, can anybody tell me the answer? How do we calculate cost of capital? Or what does it mean? What's an easier way to say cost of capital in English? Cost of money. Cost of money. How do we calculate the cost of money for the company? What two things do we need to know? Cost of equity. So the company gets money from equity or it gets money from debt. So we have to find cost of equity, right? <coughs> cost of debt. What do we do then? Add. Well, what's a more accurate way to say? Say our cost of equity is 9% and our cost of debt is 5%. What else, what, what other information do we need to know before we can say our cost of capital? Ratio. Ratio of what? Yes, we need to know our debt to equity ratio. What is the debt to equity ratio for Disney? About forty percent. So uh, debt over equity, so it's about forty percent debt. So we make a weighted average, right? You understand weighted average? And then we get our cost of capital. If we have forty percent debt and sixty percent equity, for example, we multiply the 5 by 40, okay? And we multiply 9 by 60. 40 multiplied by 5 equals 2%, okay? 60% multiplied by 9 equals 5.6%. So then our total is going to be 7.6. So we do add, we do, do add them together at the end, but first we have to find the weighted average, okay? So that's our cost of capital. So we already talked about cost of equity, okay? Risk free rate plus beta times the risk premium. The last class we talked about cost of debt. How do we calculate our cost of debt? What do we need to calculate our cost of debt? Can anybody tell me? What do I need to know to know my cost of debt? The interest rate on my loans or my bonds, yes? But what equation could we write here? Risk-free rate, okay? Plus a default spread. The default spread will be different for every company. Okay? The default, do you understand default? What does default mean? Default is an important word in finance. What does default mean? Or credit default, what does that mean? 
If I default, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, bad. What does it mean? Not pay back in full. Default means you don't pay back your loans in full. Okay? Default, write it down if you don't know. Default means we don't pay back our loans. Okay? So people would, do you know the late Greece defaulted on its loans? It means it, well, there was a voluntary arrangement where 50% of the loan was not paid back. Okay? Just a few years ago. So default spread is what is the chances of you not paying back your loan? Okay? So for government bonds, if we look at government bonds, who are you going to lend money to? Greece or Germany? Germany. So we have the risk-free rate in euros, plus Germany's default spread is going to be zero, practically for euros, right? Germany is AA country, so default spread is going to be zero. So just the risk-free rate is the German government bond, right? But the Greek government bond is going to be more higher interest rate than the German government bond. Why? Why is the Greece government bond a higher interest rate than the German government bond? Why did you say you prefer to lend money to Greece and not to Germany? Why? So I asked you, who do you want to lend money to? And you said Germany, not Greece. So the question is why? Greece is risky. Why is it risky? What's the risk? They might not pay back the money. It's a very, it's not a big risk, but still a risk. Okay, so that risk here is called the default spread. Default is uh, what is the chance of me not paying back my loan? Okay, does everybody understand default? Yes. So some countries or companies have a higher chance of not paying back the loan. That's what this means. Okay, how much higher? Is my company or country's chance of not paying back the loan compared to the risk-free asset? Okay? So how much higher is my chances of not paying back a loan compared to the US government in the US or the German government in Europe? Okay, or the Japanese government in Japan. So that's what we're talking about, the cost of debt. So where can we find this information? Where can we find this information? for the default spread. Can we find that on the internet? Yeah. Where? Who is going to tell us? Hmm? Where are we going to look for that information, the default spread? <coughs> Government bonds is easy. We can check how much is the bond selling for. So, if we type in here 10 year government bonds, in Google, right, then there are a lot of sites that are going to tell us. First one is Bloomberg, you know the Bloomberg website, yeah. right? So here we can see 10 year government bond yields. United States, 2%, right? 2.05%. Canada, 1.58%. Now, does that mean that the United States is more risky than Canada, or is there something else involved in the risk-free rate? What is, what is the risk-free rate composed of? What two things make up the risk-free rate? Okay. From the time value of money, can you remember? There's three things that make up the time value of money. Risk, here. What are these two things here? Inflation and real interest rate. Inflation and real interest rate, okay? So if we look at Canada, 1.5%, that would tell me that probably Canada has lower inflation than the US, okay? Because the real interest rate is the same. Canada and US has the same rating, AAA, top rating, okay? So if I look at this, I could say, I know the real interest rate in the US is about half a percent. So inflation in the US must be about 1.5 percent. Okay, inflation in Canada must be about 1 percent. Do you understand? Okay, then Mexico, inflation is going to be higher, but we'll also have some risk involved there. And Brazil, higher. 
Europe is interesting because these countries use the same currency, but they have different risk. Okay? So Germany is the lowest one, 0.36%. Okay, Europe has very low inflation at the moment. So this could be a negative. If the real interest rate is half a percent, practically we have negative interest rates in Germany, right? But if we buy French bonds or Italian bonds or Spanish bonds, it's a different price. Spain is 1.46%, okay? The same reason. Even though the inflation is the same because they're both using the euro, okay? Spain and Germany use the same currency. The inflation is the same. The, re the uh, real interest rate is always the same. The difference is the risk, the default spread, okay? Germany is rated better than Spain. Okay, Netherlands is rated almost the same as Germany. Portugal, Greece, 10%. Okay, so Greece has a high default spread. Do you understand default spread? Okay, so we're using this for companies too. This is for countries, but we can also find this information for companies. We said in the last class, okay? Where can we find the information for companies? If I type in S&P, S&P is called a credit rating agency, okay? If we just type in S&P, we'll see, it will come up. S&P, credit rating agency. Do you have a credit card? Yes. Do you understand credit? Yes. Xin yes. Yong? Yes. Yes? So they are rating the credit of the company. Is the company going to be able to pay back or not? You will have a credit rating when you start working, right? If you pay back your loans on time, you'll have a good credit rating. What happens if you don't pay your loan? Will you get a good or a bad credit rating? Bad credit rating. Will it be easy for you to get a mortgage if you have a bad credit rating? No, right? So we can have credit ratings for you, individual people, but this you could ask S&P to make a credit rating for you, but you kind of be wasting your money, right? Companies ask these rating agencies to make credit rating to, uh, ratings for them. Okay, so if we go to the S&P homepage, they tell us about what are credit ratings. <coughs> credit ratings are forward-looking opinions about credit risk. Forward-looking, in the future, what is the credit risk of this company? Okay, so they give us a list, best is AA. So we can see they have the list here, right? What does it mean? AAA, extremely strong capacity to pay back, highest rating. AA, very strong capacity. A, strong capacity. Moving down, right? To the bottom. C, C, highly vulnerable probably won't pay back the money, okay? So, they give this grade to every company about whether they can pay back or not. So, the company pays S&P to release the rating. S&P will uh, give them the rating. And then, according to their rating, we can know the company's default spread and we can get an idea about their cost of debt, okay? How much it would be. So find a rating here, if we write in Disney, let's see if it comes up. Sometimes we have to, here we can see Disney Enterprise. Sometimes we need to register for the site. So I'm not registered, so if you register, you can see that kind of information. It will just tell us the rating for the companies. Okay, we can also find the ratings in other places. So, do you have any question about this? Default spread? Default spread? Which has a higher default spread? Germany or Disney? Disney, Disney right? Which has a higher default spread? Uh, electricity company or New IT company. New IT company. New IT company. Okay, so we're measuring the default. In this case, the risk of not paying back our money.
to calculate the uh, calculate the price. <coughs> okay. We we mentioned in the last class the interest coverage ratio. If we don't have any rating information, <coughs> we use the interest coverage ratio, interest expenses over EBIT, and we put it into the table. We have a table here where we can convert the interest coverage ratio to a rating, A or B or C, right? Then this rating is converted into a percent. So, mainly for the small companies. So, we looked at the cost of debt for the different countries. We mentioned about tax. We can make pre-tax and after-tax cost of debt. So here is uh, when we have a market crisis, what do you expect? Is the default spread going to get higher or lower when the, we have a global economic crisis? Higher. higher. Why? If there's an economic <coughs> crisis, why is the default spread going to be higher for companies? Can anybody tell me? Do you want to lend money to a company in an economic crisis? No. Which do you prefer? To lend money to a company when the economy is good or when there's a crisis? When the economy is good, right? So the, rating can the default spread for the rating can change. Okay? <coughs> so we can see here uh, the different times and the spreads. So we can see the time here, 08. January 08 is the blue line. September 08 is the red line. November 08 is the light yellow line. January 09 is the dark yellow line. So in 2008, around September, October, there was the failure of Lehman Brothers, right? The global financial crisis was getting worse. So we can see what happened here is that, especially for the more risky companies, that was, let's say, a BB plus rating, let's look at it. It had a default spread of just uh, 3%, no, 2% here over government bonds. Then it changed up to 3%. Then it went up to 5%, and then nearly to 6% in just one year, from 2% to 6% because of the crisis. Okay? So these numbers can change. The, currently, they're quite low. Okay? The economy is, is, is okay. But at this time, when there was a crisis, they went up. So just so we can understand that uh, the default spread for each rating can change. So we need to check online, like we checked uh, last class on this link. Right? This link here. Uh, we can find today's, today's corporate bond spread. <coughs> so... We go to this link, and it, it updates the information. Just tells us usually for this rated company what is the spread, right? We looked at this the other day; it might even be different today. Right? It tells us the interest rate on, and then the spread is the uh, for each one. Okay, so this changes, this, this can change. <clears throat> so, in an economic crisis, it's harder for companies to get money, to get a loan. Okay, the loan is more expensive. Does that make sense? Default spread goes up, and the cost of debt goes up, it's harder to get money. Okay? We, have, we can notice here as well that the risk-free rate affects the cost of debt for companies too. So, currently the risk-free rate on the US government bond is very low, historically low. Okay, but if that, that's 2%. But if that was 4%, it costs more money. Right, so this is one reason why the US were printing money. If the US prints money and buys their own bonds, it puts down the interest rate on their bond, puts down the risk-free rate, and makes it cheaper for all companies. Right, to cost of equity and also cost of debt. <clears throat> so
So in, this is January 2013. We can see this is like the internet site we checked. Each rating and a percent on the side. Okay. So uh, this we can do at home. Okay. Uh, estimate an interest. Co choose a company. Look at their income statement. Find their interest payments and their EBIT, and calculate the interest coverage rate. Okay for a company. <clears throat> then using the tables in the PPT, you can find the pre-tax cost of debt and after-tax cost of debt. So this is just practice for homework. Okay? Just find a company's income statement and try to calculate the interest coverage ratio. Okay, so let's uh, discuss this question then. Assume that the market value debt ratio is 10%, while book value debt ratio is 30%. For a firm with a cost of equity of 15% and an after tax cost of debt of 5%. Okay, so the cost of capital can be calculated as follows. With the market debt ratio, it's going to be the weighted average 15% multiplied by 0.9 plus 5% multiplied by 0.1 equals 14%. With the book value debt ratio, 15% by 0.7 plus 5% by 0.3 equals 12%. So the question is, which is the more conservative estimate? Do you understand conservative? What does conservative mean? Like safer. Conservative means more safer uh, way. So which is the safer way? To use the market value or the book value? So discuss with your partner. So this is on the, on the website, right? So you don't need to take a photo. So, discuss with your partner. Which one is safer? Using the book value for debt and equity, calculating debt and equity, or the market value? The market value changes every day. The price of the stock goes up and down, right? So our equity is going to change all the time. Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Who thinks the market value is safer or more conservative? Hands up. Who thinks the book value is safer or more conservative? Right? Yeah, so we can see the book value number is lower. So that is the more conservative estimate. Or sorry, uh, uh, the market, in this case, the book value is lower, so it means that the market value is the more conservative estimate, sorry, because the book value is lower, right? Yeah. So the more conservative one is going to be the higher one. So if you come to me with a project and you say, this project is going to make a profit of 14%, right? If I look at book value, I'll say yes, take the project, right? But if I look at market value, I'll say no, don't take the project. It's higher than our cost of money, or the same as our cost of money, right? So in this case, the conservative one is the higher number. The safer one is the higher number. Do you understand? What we're doing here is we're saying, how much does it cost us to get money? Here it says it costs 12% to get money. Right? Here it says it costs us 14% to get money. So if it costs us 14% to get money, that's a safer or more conservative estimate. Okay? It means that if I have a project for 13%, in this case it costs 14% to get money, I'm not going to take it. Okay? So usually we use the market values. Uh, as the weights, as they are more conservative. 
So usually the market value is going to be a higher value of equity compared to the book value. So let's have a look at an example of Disney's book value and market value. So in Disney's 2008 financial statements, we can find the book value of debt. So we can find debt here. This is due in maturity amount due. This is bonds, right? They have to pay back this bond in this year. How much do they have to pay back? Okay. We know all of these details. So we find the average. The weighted average, we have to pay back our bonds in 5.38 years. And we have to pay back $14 billion in bonds in this time. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> Disney's total debt due in book values on the balance sheet is 16 uh, million, or six, 16 billion, right? So, and the total interest expense for the year was 728 million. Assuming that the maturity we computed above still holds, and using 6% as the pre-tax cost of debt, we can estimate the market value of Disney's debt. <coughs> so, we can use this uh, calculation, which is uh, looking at the time. Here we put in the time. Uh, 5.38 years, okay, we put in the average interest rate here, 6%, okay, here on the bottom line, and we basically we're finding the present value, finding the present value of this money we need to pay back, okay, and then we also find uh, present value of this number here. So we end up with 14.92 million. So we also have to calculate the leases. So do you understand lease? So Disney is leasing some equipment or business or something like this. So again we, we find out our commitments and we find out the present value can find the present value we studied in time value of money, right? If I owe, if I have to pay back this much money after four years, how much is the present value of that? This is the present value, okay? So we can find out the total present value of this debt, and then we add this uh, interest bearing debt bonds plus the present value of the leases is going to give us uh, 16682 uh, million. So, this is a little bit more complicated. So we, uh, just to sum up again, we go into the financial information okay, of the company, we can find on Yahoo Finance. We find out about their bonds, how much bonds do they have. Okay? We find the present value. Find the present value using our equation from uh, our <laughs> present value equations of the bonds. We find the present value of the lease. We add them together and we get the present value of our debt for Disney. So we will be doing uh, our second project I'll talk about next week will be group project will be, you will be calculating the cost of capital for a company. So you're going to find the cost of equity and the cost of debt for the company, right? So this is kind of, this is homework now that you can do, but it's e easier, it will help you later when you're doing your project, if you use the same company, right? Do, if you do this as a homework, then you, for one company, always use the same company, right? then you have that information ready for your project, okay? So, <clears throat> we want to uh, estimate the market value of equity and the book value of equity, the market value of debt and the book value of debt, and then 
make some weights for equity and equity and debt and based on those things. So if we go to Yahoo Finance, I can show you where we can get this kind of information about the company's debt and so on. So <clears throat> for example, if we look up for Disney, we can find companies have to make this kind of information public. So people can access that kind of information. <clears throat> so if we go to Disney on Yahoo Finance, we can see a section here which says SEC filings. SEC is Securities Exchange Commission. This is the regulator of the US stock market. So if you want to sell stocks in the US, you have to do what the SEC tells you to do. Okay? And the SEC tells you, you have to make very detailed accounts every year. Okay? And you have to give them to me, and then the, this is going to be made public. So we can see that Disney has made some a lot of uh, filings here. If we click on SEC filings, so, the one that we're interested in is their annual report, which is 10K. This is called 10K. Will you remember 10K? Then you can write it down if you're not going to remember. 10K. Okay, this is the document where annual report, it says annual report here, right? Where we can find this extra information. So, we can click on this full filing at Edgar Online. So usually this type of report is made like this for the internet, it's easier. You can click on one part to find the uh, information you need. Okay, so we can find a lot of things about Disney, what properties does it own, legal proceedings, does it have any legal proceedings, mm, management discussions and so on. We can see, of course, we can see income statements and balance sheet uh, somewhere else. So usually, we can find extra information in, here we have financial statements and supplementary data. Do you understand supplementary data? What does supplementary mean? Extra, some extra data, right? Or we can also find in... Uh, Usually they have notes to the consolidated statements. <clears throat> okay, so in this case it's not coming up right now. But we can uh, search through uh, here we have notes to consolidate the financial statements, right? This is, uh, so the notes to the financial statements is some kind of extra information. So uh, we can go through these notes, I don't know why this is here, but here we can see a lot of information about Disney. For example, where did we find out about how much of Disney's business is what? Here they have revenues, media networks, parks and resorts, studio entertainment, and so on. Can you remember in the cost of equity we divided up Disney into different businesses? Where did we get that information? Where Disney gets its revenues? We got it in this area, the 10K, the annual report, okay? So we can see how much money it's getting from each area. So we can see that media networks is the biggest, has the biggest revenues, okay? That's where we get that kind of information from. Uh, one thing, do you know how to use the find function? You press Control and F, this box comes up here, right? So for example, if I was looking for revenues on this document, I would type in here revenues, and press enter, and all the revenues comes up. Then I can find the revenues more quickly, right? 
So if I'm looking for, in this case, I'm looking for something like bonds or debt, right? I'm going to type in debt and find the uh, debt on the balance sheet, right? So here I can find some debt that the company has, okay? Foreign currency denominated debt, this kind of thing. So we can go down through this and what we're basically doing is looking in detail at the company's uh, statements and finding out their debt exactly. And leases, we type, I type in leases, here we can see again leases on the document. So we can go down and find about their uh, leases. So this is the document where we can find that kind of information. It's a little bit time consuming. Just we need to find out their value of their debt and value of their leases and find the present value. So just, I guess this is probably the most challenging part of you will do in your project. Okay, is uh, finding this information okay, for the cost of debt. So let's have a look at Disney's cost of capital. Do you have any question about that part? The annual report or 10K? So, so when I do your project, I'll give you some more specific written instructions to help you to get that information, right? So uh, in Disney's case, cost of equity was the risk-free rate plus beta times the risk premium, 8.91%. Okay, uh, market value of equity in Disney, 45 billion. So equity percentage is 73%. Debt, after, co after cost of debt in Disney, risk-free rate plus default spread times one minus the tax rate. We're looking for the after-tax cost of debt. So 3.5 plus 2.5, 3.72. Market value of debt of Disney, 16.682 billion. Okay, we found out. And then uh, debt over debt plus equity, 26%. So we find a weighted average, 8.9% multiplied by 0 0.730 plus 3.72% by 0.269 equals 7.51%. So this is our cost of capital for Disney. 7.51%. That's what it cost Disney to get money. Okay? So, after all we talked about, we discussed about calculating our cost of equity, we talked about calculating our cost of debt, so after all of that, we find this number. Okay? That's what it cost Disney to get money. And this will be your, your, so you should, at the end of your project, you will have something like this. Instead of Disney, you'll have another company, you'll make this kind of thing, okay? And tell me what is the cost of capital for that company. So, we can also make, break down the cost of capital into divisions. So we saw the different divisions for Disney, okay? We saw that Disney has different cost of equity for each division, we already talked about. Cost of debt, we're going to say is the same for each division. So then we find out the debt to equity ratio of each division. We can see that parks and resorts has more debt than uh, consumer products. Okay? With parks and resorts, perhaps we needed more loans to build a lot of roller coasters and other types of buildings, right? So we find the debt to equity ratio of each sector and we come up with a cost of capital for each division in the company. Okay? So also in your project, when you choose a project company, you should choose a project with at least two businesses, more than one business, okay? Uh, Tata Chemicals, we, we can see Tata Chemicals cost of equity, after tax cost of debt, debt to equity ratio, cost of capital, 11%. Arab Cruise, cost of equity is quite high, Okay, after tax cost of debt, 
cost of capital 12% in US dollars or 18% uh, percent in the nominal, in the real, the Brazilian currency. Okay? So we can change, uh, do, rather than doing it into different currencies, we can just change, we can use this equation to change uh, the currency. We can take the inflation rate in the US, the inflation rate in the real, and we put the real on the top line, the US on the bottom line. So inflation in Brazil is 7%, so 1.07. Inflation in US is 2%, so 1.02. And we put here the cost of capital, minus 1. Using this equation, it will just come, uh, change to another currency, okay? Just using the inflation way. So, uh, <coughs> for just a note for Deutsche Bank, we just calculate the cost of equity, but banks are a little bit strange with debt. They have a lot of debt, so we just, we're not going to calculate the cost of capital there. So, uh, what about Bookscape? We already talked about Bookscape and we said the cost of equity is higher for Bookscape for an undiversified investor rather than a diversified one. So we said that the beta was not correct for the Bookscape because the beta was for people who are diversified investors. But the person who owns Bookscape, just the bookshop, they're not a diversified investor, so we don't. We have to make an extra calculation, okay, to add to the beta. So, uh, if Bookscape was public company with diversified investors, its cost of equity would, would be 11.6. But because it's not, it has undiversified investors. It's 20.9. Its cost of debt is 3.6 after tax and debt to equity ratio. So cost of capital for the bookstore is 14%, 14.9. If it was, if we had a diversified investor in the bookstore, it would just be 8%, the cost of capital. So do you have any question about this, the cost of capital for the different, different companies? We calculated their cost of equity, their cost of debt, we found their debt to equity ratio we calculate their cost of capital. Okay. So, uh, this is also related to the uh, project. Okay, so just uh, use putting the things together. Okay. So, when, which do we use as a hurdle rate? The cost of equity or the cost of capital? Capital. So we have a project and we have to decide if we're going to invest in the project or not. So then we have to decide which is the hurdle rate? Cost of capital, which is including debt, or cost of equity, not including debt. Okay? So it depends on whether the returns measured are to the equity investors or to all the claim holders on the firms. So it means that it depends who is getting the benefit of the return. Is it just the shareholders or is it the company? So if the returns are measured to equity investors, the equity investors are getting the stockholders are getting the benefit, then we would use the cost of equity. <coughs> if the returns are measured to the company, then we would use the cost of capital. So it means we can talk a little bit more about this later when we talk about uh, what we do with our profits. Right? Are we going to reinvest the profit in the company or are we going to pay them as dividends to our stockholders? Okay? So many companies don't pay dividends, so they would think an early company about the cost of capital. Okay, more so. So, what we have done now is we have calculated our hurdle rate for the company. It took us a long time. We said this would be the longest part of the course. Okay, which is we want to find out the cost of money 
the amount of it costs us to get money. Okay, so we can make a decision. If we make this much profit, should we invest or don't invest, right? So we can make the investment decision. Invest in projects or assets that make a return greater than our hurdle rate. So we calculated our hurdle rate. It reflects the riskiness of our company, the riskiness of our business, and uh, how much debt we have, how much equity we have, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to calculating the return. So we can compare our return against our hurdle rate, and then we can decide whether to make the investment or not. So let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <laughs>